Now that we've introduced bargaining games and the idea of solution concepts in general, and we've studied Nash's axioms for a bargaining solution, let's now look at the bargaining solution concept proposed by Nash, the Nash bargaining solution. So what is the Nash bargaining solution? It's a solution concept will denote with this calligraphic N such that for each bargaining game, the Nash solution selects an alternative will denote N of S or A star 1, A star 2, a utility level for player 1 and a utility level for player 2. And these utility numbers are chosen to solve the problem, maximize the product of A1 times by A2 Subject to the conditions, the alternative chosen must belong to the bargaining game S and the utility levels should be at least the disagreement level 0. Given an alternative A that belongs to a bargaining game S, um, the product A1 times A2 is sometimes called the Nash product and so the Nash bargaining solution chooses the alternative from the bargaining set S better or at least as good as the disagreement point for both players that maximizes the Nash product. So graphically we can represent the Nash bargaining solution as follows. Here is a typical bargaining problem with bargaining set S, this pink shaded area including the boundary, and if we look at curves where the Nash products are constant, so here I've indicated three such curves where A1 times A2 is constant along each of these uh, curves. And then the Nash solution wants to choose the alternative that belongs to S that maximizes the Nash product, which is this point here I've labeled N of S. Upon first sight of this, the idea of choosing an alternative to maximize the product of utilities seems a rather strange thing to do. Why are we multiplying utility numbers together? Well, the first proposition we have here is that if we do this, if we choose to use the bargaining solution proposed by Nash, then we can guarantee that we're using a solution concept that satisfies the four axioms we studied in the previous video. So proposition one is that the Nash bargaining solution N satisfies axioms one through four. That is Pareto efficiency, symmetry, linear invariance, and independence of irrelevant alternatives. The proof of this proposition I've left as an exercise as the first question in this week's problem set. So proposition one lends some support to the rather strange idea of maximizing the product of utilities and using that as a solution concept for uh, solving bargaining games. What's more remarkable, however, is that not only does the Nash bargaining solution satisfy our four axioms, it is the only solution concept that satisfies those axioms. So Nash's list of axioms has precisely pinned down exactly one solution concept. Only the Nash bargaining solution satisfies axioms one through four. We'll state this as proposition two. If a solution concept phi satisfies axioms one through four, Pareto efficiency, symmetry, linear invariance, and independence of irrelevant alternatives or contraction independence, then it is the Nash bargaining solution. Phi is equal to N, the Nash bargaining solution, as well as providing us with the foundational result in bargaining theory. This proposition, I'd also like you to notice that it really exemplifies the power of the axiomatic method. Remember, bargaining is a problem that economists studied for a long time and had very little to say about it. Nash's approach using the axiomatic method was to write down the properties that you would like a solution to have, and as it turned out, the list precisely characterized only one possible solution, that is, the Nash bargaining solution of choosing an alternative to maximize the product of utilities. So let's now prove proposition two, the result that if we take any bargaining solution concept, 
that satisfies axioms one through four, then it must be the Nash bargaining solution. Nash's proof is very beautiful and can be shown using just simple diagrams. So let's go through the proof of this now. So suppose phi satisfies axioms one through four. And let's take a typical uh, bargaining problem. Here I've illustrated a bargaining set S and we don't know where phi of S is yet, but I've pointed here on the diagram to the Nash bargaining solution for this problem. So we know what N of S is for this problem. The Nash bargaining solution in this case chooses a utility A star one for player one and utility A star two for player two. But now let's consider rescaling the problem. So I'm going to take the utilities of both players and rescale them essentially so that the Nash solution is mapped to the point 1, 1. So if I let alpha be 1 divided by a star 1 for player 1 and in the second coordinate 1 divided by a star 2 for player 2. Then transforming the game to alpha s gives the following and I know that the Nash solution for this problem is 1, 1. Or another way of saying this, the Nash solution to the problem alpha s is equal to alpha times the Nash solution, which is equal to 1, 1. Remember, we know from proposition 1 that the Nash solution satisfies linear invariance. For the next step of the proof, let's zoom out a little bit. So I've just zoomed out. I haven't changed the problem here. We still have our bargaining problem alpha s and the Nash solution to alpha s is on the 45 degree line at the point one, one. Next, suppose I contain the bargaining set alpha s in a large symmetric square here that I've labeled uh, capital T. So this capital T is a different bargaining problem and the northeast line of uh, this, this square has the equation a1 plus a2 is equal to Two. So it has a slope of minus one and I know it goes through the point one one on the 45 degree line. And so I know that the equation for this part of the square is a one plus a two is equal to two. Why does this matter? Well, we know that within the set alpha s that any alternative a that belongs to alpha s, the Nash product for that alternative must be less than or equal to 1 because the Nash product is maximized at the point 1, 1 where the Nash product is equal to 1. So for every point in alpha s, the Nash product is less than or equal to 1. And in the lecture notes, I've shown that you can use this inequality to prove that a1 plus a2 is less than or equal to 2 for every element in the set alpha s. And so what we're really showing, although it's quite clear on the diagram, is that the set alpha s is a subset of this large square T. So what can I say about the bargaining game capital T? Well, it's symmetric. And so I know the solution for um, this. Remember that phi, our solution concept, satisfies the axiom of symmetry. So I know that the solution must lie somewhere along the 45 degree line. And also, I know that phi satisfies the Pareto efficiency axiom. And so it must be an undominated alternative along the 45 degree line. And clearly, this occurs at the point 1, 1. So our solution concept phi coincides with the Nash bargaining solution and they are both equal to 1 1. Why is this useful to know? Well remember the axiom of independence of irrelevant alternatives. Now I know that our solution concept phi chooses the point 1 1 in the large symmetric game t and I know that the set alpha s is contained within t and also contains the point 1 1 and so all the prerequisites are met for the independence of irrelevant alternatives axiom to apply. And so I know that our solution concept phi is going to choose the same point for the game alpha s that it does for the game t. And so our solution for the game alpha s is equal to 1, 1 as well. So we've shown that our solution concept phi 
that we assume satisfies axioms 1 through 4 will coincide with the Nash solution for the game T and also for the game alpha S. Finally, we can use the linear invariance axiom to say, well, if our uh, solution concept coincides with the Nash solution in the game alpha S, then it will also coincide with the Nash solution in our original game S. And so we picked an arbitrary bargaining game S and we've shown at that if our solution concept phi satisfies axioms 1 through 4, then phi of S must equal the Nash bargaining solution for S. Because we chose S arbitrarily, this holds for all bargaining problems and so phi is equal to the Nash bargaining solution. And that completes the proof of Proposition 2. Let me just give a very quick summary of the approach used in the proof. Essentially, if we took any bargaining game S that was symmetric, then we could use the symmetry and the efficiency axioms to show that it coincides with the Nash bargaining solution. If the bargaining game S is not symmetric, then we can rescale it so that its Nash solution is, is on the 45 degree line and then contain the transformed problem within a large symmetric game. Use symmetry and efficiency to find that the Nash bargaining solution coincides with our solution for that problem, and then use contraction independence or independence of a relevant alternative to show that our solution for the transformed problem coincides with the Nash bargaining solution. And then finally use linear invariance to uh, show that the original problem S has the same solution as the Nash bargaining solution. So in all cases, if a solution concept satisfies axiom 1 through 4, it always gives the same alternative selected by the Nash bargaining solution. It is equal to the Nash bargaining solution.